If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glycerolf. A few days ago, the Magic subreddit saw a thread asking the question, should Price of Progress, or weaker equivalent, be a standard stable? And you can go through the text, it's actually well more than just that. If that were all, I wouldn't bother making a video about it. But it goes into modern as well. Should it or a weaker equivalent? They're really two different questions, I want to talk about both of them. For those that don't know, first is context. Price of Progress is an Exodus Uncommon, it's two mana, it's an instant and it's red. Each player takes damage equal to twice the number of non-basic lands that they control. So if you haven't seen Legacy Burn, suffice to say that this is an awesome card in it. Because you see so many non-basics in Legacy, there, there aren't as many ways to punish uh, dual lands as you might expect, right? Blood Moon doesn't see a ton of play in Legacy. Wasteland is around, of course. There isn't really any land walk, that sort of... But you get Price of Progress, and that can punish really anything, right? Well, not really any. Pretty close to anything, other than the Burn Mirror, maybe Merfolk, eh, even Death and Taxes has enough non-basics you can get away with it, and especially the greedier mana bases like Delver, for instance. This is an especially good card. It is good enough to see play in Legacy, and the question here is, could it be a standard staple? So, on its face, it looks like the answer is no, 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 no. And they even mention uh, join the ranks of the likes of Naturalize and Negate, or Cancel. Uh, for a number of reasons, that doesn't work. For one thing, it doesn't do enough in Limited, where you see so many basic lands. But beyond even that, just talking about constructed play, this was printed back in, in Exodus. Context is everything. Would Price of Progress be too strong in, say, Kamigawa Block or Theros? Maybe not, because of how much monocolor matter, especially Theros. Would it be too good in, say, Return to Ravnica or Battle for Zendikar? You bet! <laughs> you bet it would, because you rely so heavily on these multicolor bases. Now, OP brings up a good point. I, well, it's a, yeah, it's a good point, which is, if you leave mana base is unchecked. Remember, we don't have three mana uh, land destruction anymore. We don't have blood moon effects anymore. We don't have back to basics effects anymore. And if that's the case, then in certain standard environments, you can see three or four color decks all the time. Now that was a thing back when, let's see, Cons of Tarkir through Battle for Zendikar was around. You could have four Jeskai Black, for instance. Or, what was it, Obzom Blue? These sorts of decks, four color control or mid range, could show up because there was nothing to keep them in check. And indeed, when Teleri Community College made a video on Frontier, this was one of the concerns, one of the main concerns brought up. There's no, none of these cards that we often think of as being unfair exist to keep the format from developing in that direction. Price of Progress could serve to make mono or two-color decks more viable by punishing greedy mana bases. That being said, I think that we'd go a little too strong, too far, to just put Price of Progress in, but that wasn't quite the question. Price of Progress or a weaker equivalent, and that's doing an awful lot of work here. Could you have, say, a two-mana one that's sorcery speed and does the same thing? That's still probably too strong. Could you have a 2-mana 1 at instant speed that deals damage equal to the number of non-basic lands? That might not be too bad, although for 2-mana, uh, if, if you want to try to give it the Tribal Flame test, right, Tribal Flame, ideally it ends up being 5 damage, could you get 5 damage out of Price of Progress, this weaker version of it, later on in the game? Maybe. Maybe that's, eh, that's an option. I, I haven't obviously playtested that. And I wonder if that's something that they have. That'd be interesting to try to find out. Uh, but beyond that, another thing that you could do is simply increase the cost. I would imagine very strongly that you would have to increase the cost by quite a bit if you're going to keep twice the amount of 
uh, damage equal to twice the number of non-basic lands. Presumably if you're running a price of progress style effect, you have zero, or at least you have zero that remain on the field. For example, you get a fetch lands, they just all get basic mountains. If that's the case, there's this symmetrical effect that never sees any real symmetry. You have to make sure not to undercost that. Could it be viable at three mana? I think three mana for the same text on the card, the card might be too good. I would imagine so. For standard, we're talking about the standard. Maybe that's too slow in modern, especially in a burn deck that doesn't always get up to even three mana. Um, and once you get up to more than three mana, all of the opponent's control spells, they can now disallow it, they can void shatter it, they can negate it, they can cancel it. All of those are now turned on, and that fact in and of itself can keep the card in check. Put it at three mana, and if you're on the play, that isn't really a thing. If you're wondering why they're okay with four mana land destruction, as there are so many in standard right now, volcanic upheaval, structural distortion, um, wait, is it Volcanic Upheaval? The four mana instant from Battle for Zendikar. Uh, volcanic Vision was the Dragons of Tarkir one, there we go. Uh, Creeping Mold, Reclaiming Vines, Demolish... Am I missing any? <laughs> That's a lot. But they're okay with that because, unlike, say, Stone Rain, you're not able to play those on turn two. Oh, or you're not able to play them on turn three on the play before the opponent gets their third mana for so many counter spells. Yeah, they could negate it, that's true, but it turns on pretty much all of their counter magic if it happens to have, uh, if you have to play it on turn four, right? That's the idea, I imagine. A similar function works here, I believe. If it happens late enough, it can afford to be more powerful because now there are more options to get rid of it, to counter it. I would imagine that that's the case. Now, would it be... Would something like prog Price of Progress, excuse me, be too good for modern? I think that that depends on the metagame. There are enough decks that can get away with just running basics that maybe not, but either it's good enough that it pushes the meta towards more of these decks, mm, maybe it pushes Control more to the fore because they have the ability to run the greedy mana base and still play around it by virtue of countering it or taking it out of their hand with, say, Thoughtseize or Inquisition? Maybe. I'd be interested to look into that, if what I would do to try to playtest this card if I worked at WotC, just to see if something like that would be viable. Especially two ma the same card, but dealing damage equal to X, not twice X. I'd really like to see how that would work. OP has a point. It could push standard towards a little bit more diversity by not making all of the most competitive decks in certain environments three or four colors. But you have to be careful. That's a fine balance. It's hard to find. All right, that's it for now. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.